Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about runnable entity. In our previous video, we discussed about RT events and AutoSAR interfaces. I have mentioned all my AutoSAR videos in the description. You can watch it. As you can see in this picture, every software component has software component internal behavior. And software component internal behavior has runnable entity. Now you will come to know about it where runnable entity will get configured. It will be configured inside software component internal behavior. If you want to understand more clear about what all other things will be there inside the software component internal behavior, already I have published one video. You can watch it. What is runnable entity? Runnable entity is just like a functions in C. And runnable entity is a sequence of instructions provided by software component that can be started by RTE meaning runtime environment. Each software component internal behavior will contain one or more runnable entities and runnable entities are invoked by RT as a result of RT events. Since a composition software component do not have a software component internal behavior, it cannot own runnable entities by themselves because every runnable entity will be associated with the software component internal behavior. That will be configured inside the software component internal behavior. But your composition software component doesn't have a software component internal behavior. You cannot have a runnable entities for your composition software component. But atomic software component type which fills in the composition software component shall have runnable entities. And runnable entity can be periodic or sporadic. Periodic means timing event. Sporadic means data received event. And runnables can be activated by multiple tasks. Because every event meaning RT event will be associated with a runnable entity and event should be mapped with the task. So in that case task, event, runnable entity everything will be tightly coupled. The types of runnables. Runnable entities can be classified into two categories depends on the aggregation of weight points. Category 1 and category 2. Category 1 has category 1A and category 1B. So what is category 1 and category 2? So, category 1 means runnable entities do not have weight points and are required to terminate in a finite amount of time. Meaning, category 1 runnable doesn't have a waiting state. And category 2 means runnable entities always aggregate at least one weight point. Meaning, here in this case in category 2, we will have a weight state. So, you can imagine now the category 1 runnable always will be associated with the basic task. But category 2 will always will be associated with the extended task. But we can deeply discuss in a separate video about category of runnables. Category 1A, it's only allowed to use the implicit communication. And category 1B, it is allowed to use implicit or explicit communication and allowed to invoke an operation of a server. And in other types, we can consider like three types of runnables. One it, init, periodic and server. Init means like kind of init event or that's called as a init runnables. It is a software routine that is executed during the initialization phase of an issue. So whenever your issue has started, then init runnables will get triggered. So all these resources, all will allocation will happen via init runnables. Periodic runnables, it will be mapped with the timing event. So execute the operation periodically, 10 millisecond, 100 millisecond, 50 millisecond or 1000 millisecond. These all are for an example for periodic runnables. Server runnable. This runnable is used to implement server or client port interface. This is generally called as a server runnable. What are the mandatory attributes we need to concentrate when we are going to configure runnables? Basically, three we need to configure. One is can be invoked concurrently tag. Another one is minimum start interval. Third one is a symbol. The symbol name, the same name, we will write the functions in C code. Okay, what is can be invoked concurrently? This is a boolean attribute. When set to true, the enclosing runnable entity can be invoked concurrently. So, when can we can be invoked concurrently set to true, then concurrent invocation of runnable entity. That is the meaning. So, in case, it is allowed to invoke same runnable entity several times concurrently in different OS tasks, meaning different autos or OS tasks. However, there is no bound on the number of concurrent invocation of the runnable entity. What can be invoked concurrently also, we can discuss in a separate video in more detail because we need to concentrate on many topics under can be invoked concurrently. And minimum start interval. The minimum start interval between scheduling two consecutive execution of the same runnable entity guaranteed by RTE. The time interval is specified in seconds. But we have to be carefully handle the 
minimum start interval and the symbol symbol name is just like a function name which what are the function you are going to write it in c the same name you have to mention in a symbol in the same case we have some optional attributes also to configure in runnable entity because based on your requirement and based on your uh, um, like our requirement we have to decide it for an example runnable entities can have data read access data receive point by arguments data receive point by values data send points data write access external triggering points internal triggering points mode access points mode switch point parameter access read local variables wait points written local variables and variation point these all are will be because here it is not mandatory but based on your requirement and based on your need you can choose for an example in our previous video we have used many of the things from here under runnable entity so like from there you will come to know about it then what all are the cases in what all are the parameter or attributes you should choose when you are going to design a runnable entity this is a simple example for how the event to runnable mapping can happen for an example here i have application software component internal behavior and this is a periodic timing event it will get called every 100 millisecond and one runnable entity is associated with timing event for an example i have named as re underscore run so event here we have a tight coupling with runnable entity but this event should be mapped with the task so task event and runnable entity this is just an example how the event to runnable mapping can happen now whenever we talked about like it's a c kind of function then what kind of arguments we will share and how the arguments will be handled by rte so each runnable entity the rte generator provides a function according to the runnable entity symbol for an example here re underscore serve is the runnable entity name but in the name of symbol we will write a function in c if we will see here i have named as symbol as server so the same name i have created the function in c it's a, like a function definition so here you can write based on your requirement but how this will be handled by rte so when creating and configuring a runnable entity the arguments are usually not explicitly defined instead the rte generator creates the arguments out of the runnable entity context if you want to clearly understand with one example you can imagine now you have created a runnable which is triggered by an rt event the rt event can be considered as an operation invoked event this operation invoked event is linked to an operation of a receiver port interface this means that the code generated for this runnable entity will contain the arguments of this operation but when we discussed about the client server interface we clearly discussed about how the operation invoked event how we can have a, a, a inter, a inside interface how we can have a multiple operations and all for runnable entities triggered from a client server operation the symbols of the automatically created arguments can manually be defined by adding a symbol to the configuration parameter argument so this is the way rt will handle the arguments of a runnable entity how the communication can happen by using runnables we can use the same runnable entity to receive a data on one interface and send data on another interface the thing is you can have a multiple synchronous server call point and you can make a synchronous asynchronous all these things inside runnables so by using one interface you can receive a data and by using another interface you can send a data and receive a data on a port and then call a server port to process the received data this is what we have deeply discussed inside the client server interface for example you may create a runnable entity that reads an integer value from an r port so you can imagine a situation via r port you are just reading a data and it multiplies by 2 and send it out to an p port this is possible by using the same runnable entity so in this the way the communication back happen by using a runnable and minimum start interval cannot be specified for a runnable entity that is invoked by an operation invoked event and responding to a periodic runnables so now we discussed about timing event and we have a periodic runnables how this will be handled for an example then might be you, you will have a question yourself do we need a port always or how we can handle it if a software component includes a runnable entity that are not triggered by communication through the ports for an example if we'll take a data received event the runnable which is associated with the data received event will always will get triggered via port but if a software component include runnable entity that are not triggered by communication through the ports of the component you need to make sure that the runnable entities are executed at run time this is the example for periodic runnable you can consider a case of timing event and background event in that case 
you no need anything from a port or you need no need to receive anything via port to trigger your runnable this will automatically will get triggered runnable by using the events itself so who is uh, taking the full responsible os because your timing will be mapped with the os class so from there the complete responsibility will be taken this is the way responding to periodic runnables will happen thanks for watching this video if you like it please share it with your friends if you want to stay with us for more technical content then please subscribe our channel thank you so much have a nice day